Welcome to the Complete Story Series. This is the location where we take your favorite comic books, break them down into quick little digestible bites, we explain what happened within them, allowing for a much more epic recap involving voices and music, and then we spit it back out to you in a most interesting manner. All alterations of the panel section images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Now, this is the continuing storyline of the Green Lantern. This is actually a really cool book. Personally, I'm a huge fan of it because it allows us to see things from a brand new Green Lantern's point of view. Simon Baz and Jessica Cruz as they learn to be the Green Lanterns of Earth. Since Hal Jordan and everyone else is basically fighting off entire, like, universes of enemies. So if you don't remember the last story that we did, they basically teamed up with Batman where he basically said that they are potentially the Green Lanterns that he could finally start trusting. This is the next storyline, Green Lanterns, Polarity. And it's basically what's happening next in this entire timeline and storyline of that kind of a thing. Following this, they are going to be up on the planet Bogo, learning how to become real Green Lanterns. But how do we get to that point? Dr. Neil Emerson is telling everyone that now more than ever he is convinced that magnetism holds untold potential to revolutionize medical care. Not only can they treat tumors and treat cancer, they can bring an end to all illnesses. They can cure death itself. In the empty stands, Dr. Polaris claps, saying that that was a nice speech, so what's stopping him? Neil says that everyone attacked him, stating that he was a fraud, except for his brother Seth. Seth always believed in him. Isn't that enough? Dr. Polaris asks, is it ever really enough? Slowly, Neil begins to open up his eyes as the alarm clock goes off, telling himself that the dreams have started again. He grabs the alarm clock and throws it against the wall, stating that he needs his medication. He ran out of pills a week ago. He can't deal with this now. He has to find a way to hang on. He has to find a way to cure Seth. Meanwhile, over in Michigan, Simon tells his brother-in-law, Nazir, that he and Jessica have to step out for a Justice League thing. Is everything cool here? Nazir sits down at a chair on the porch looking down, telling him, I got it, go on. Simon asks him what's wrong, and Nazir snaps at him, telling him that all he ever does is comes and goes as he pleases. They're not a hotel, they're his family. And that means that he should be helping out, like maybe getting a job? As the two begin to argue over what makes a real job as being a Green Lantern a job, Jessica steps out, stating that they all need to hurry or they will. Oops, didn't mean to. Simon turns back from Nazir, stating, It's fine. We're done. Let's just go. A short while later, as the two of them fly off, Jessica says not to worry. Her sister won't get off her back about getting a job either. And Simon yells at her, It was nothing, all right? Jessica tells him it's fine. Just because him and his brother are being buttheads doesn't mean that he has to get pissed at her about it. Simon sighs. Ugh, you're right. It's just, when I did the impossible, bringing Nazir out of his coma, I just wanted to be a good lantern. I just thought that the ring was the greatest thing to ever happen to me. Me and my family could have it better than ever, but instead it just seems to be pushing them away. Back with Neil, he meets with his drug dealer for more pills, and as the dealer reaches down to grab them, he turns back with a sonic rifle blasting Neil. Before Neil has a chance to react, more soldiers storm into the room, and the dealer asks that if he knows his boss, Director Harcourt. A hologram of Harcourt appears, and she asks how exactly are his experiments going. Neil asks where's Amanda Waller, and Harcourt tells him that she runs Task Force X now, so she will be his new headache. She's here to make a deal. They will allow him to continue his research under their custody, as well as treat his bipolar disorder. Doesn't he wish to save Seth? The metal in the room begins to twist, and he shouts for her to shut up. She doesn't deserve to say that name. Harcourt goes on saying that this is an offer backed by Uncle Sam. Limited time only, non-negotiable. So what's it going to be? As all of the small metallic objects in the room shoot towards the soldier, Neil says that Uncle Sam can shove it. A short while later at Belle Reve, Harcourt shows images of the scene and tells Simon and Jessica that as they can see, they got their answer. Currently, he's in Gateway City, where they do not know, but Neil is not to be messed with. As soon as they have their shot, they need to take him down. Simon and Jessica tell her that that is not how they do things in the Justice League. Just because they can't get him into custody doesn't mean that the Green Lanterns can't. And Jessica adds, we're extremely powerful too. A little while later, as the two of them fly over Gateway City, Jessica says that this place is beautiful. Why would Wonder Woman ever move from here? This puts Portland and Metropolis to shame. Simon tells Jessica that she's never been to Metropolis, and Jessica says that she totally has in video games. Once the Lanterns reach the hospital where Neil's brother is staying, they overhear the argument from down the hall. Neil is yelling at a doctor, stating that they need to be more aggressive with the brain cancer, and the doctor tries to tell him that he is really a doctor. He should know that, but before they can go on, Simon shouts to Neil, and he creates a construct tube, telling him that he now has to deal with them. Neil tells him that he was pretty stupid to come here with all of that metal around them. Just because he's in here doesn't mean anything. The construct begins to fade as Simon shouts in pain, and Neil says, Oh, and those metal fillings in your mouth turning into spikes can really hurt. Neil bursts through the wall, shouting, Nothing will contain me! 
Simon and Jessica quickly follow, but as they get into the air, Neil hits them with a semi, and then he begins to wrap it around them, and more cars on top of that. The lanterns create a shield to stop Neil from crushing them, but then they hear a splash. Simon says that his ears just popped, and Jessica begins to notice water coming in from the cracks between the twisted cars. As the water begins to fill up, Simon starts trying to frantically drill his way out, but the fear of being trapped is just setting in. The harder that he pushes, the more his ring tells him, insufficient willpower. Over and over, the constructs that Simon creates all shatter, and Jessica calmly tells her ring that she knows that she has enough willpower to have her ring call her Jaybird. So she begins to focus on her breathing, and she tells herself, she is not her fear, she is not her fear, she is not her fear, and as the twisted ball of cars begin to sink, a green light begins to shine out of them, and the ring says, sufficient willpower achieved. Both Simon and Jessica shoot out of the water, and Simon says, thanks, you're really losing it down there. And Jessica tells him that they fall down seven times, but they get up eight. As the two of them head back to the hospital, the doctor explains that Neil left taking Seth and the medical devices to keep him alive, but without proper treatment, Seth only has a day or two at most. Using the help of Cyborg, the Lanterns discover where Neil has moved everything to, and as they hurry over to that location, Neil finds himself back in his mind. He's on a stage, and now Seth is with him, telling him that there's no pressure. He just wants his kids to grow up. So can he really do it? Neil tells him, yeah, of course. I know what I have to do now. Dr. Polaris says, yes. It's obvious what needs to happen. We need to put back on the costume. Seth says not to listen to Polaris, but Polaris shouts that they discredited me, imprisoned me, and they didn't even send Superman to stop me. They think that I'm a joke. Back in the real world, Neil shouts for Dr. Polaris to shut up, and then he looks up at Seth, telling him that he swears he will get him out of this bed. He's so close. Meanwhile, over in space, over at the planet Mogo, Jon Stewart calls for a meeting with the Lanterns, who saw the Guardian on Earth, Raimi. Jon asks if they're sure what they saw, and one of the Lanterns says that if he doesn't believe them, believe the rings. The both of the rings confirm that the Guardian on Earth is Raimi, exiled from the Guardians nine billion years ago. Ganthet says that Raimi created the very first Lantern rings to save them from both Thum, and Sage says that Raimi is a pariah, bringing him would only be an error. As he sips his coffee, John says that he's giving an order. Bring that Guardian and the Lanterns in. Back on Earth, Simon and Jessica crash into the warehouse and they see Seth there. Simon looks at him and he's reminded of what he was looking at when he was looking at Nazir. And Jessica says that it looks like Neil stepped out to get Chrome for his shiny helmet. Suddenly the room begins to tear open and Neil yells asking, Do you think I'm a joke? I'm Dr. Polaris! The two create a shield as Neil begins to throw more cars at them, but one knocks the two of them away. Neil tells them that he will soon be out of their way. And they won't ever find him again, but before he goes he will make sure that they understand that he is NOT a joke! As Neil goes on, he hears the beeping from Seth's vitals as he begins to flatline. He rips off his helmet, shouting, No! He's dying! Neil runs over to check on the computers, and Simon tells Jessica that they need to get Seth to the hospital. Neil shouts that they will not touch him, and then metal shoots out of the ground, wrapping around them. After injecting Seth, Neil says that he can move the metal through Seth's blood and remove the tumor. All he has to do is hang on. Simon and Jessica break free, and Simon says, Listen, I can save Seth. I've done it once before. Neil tells him to stay back or he'll crush him, and Simon says that he can't really explain, but sometimes he can heal people with his ring. If you don't let me help now, Seth is gonna die. My best friend was once in a coma, and the ring saved him. Through his sobs, Neil asks, What do you need? Simon begins to focus the willpower of his ring, begging for it to work. Please, save this man's life. And as Simon uses up all of his energy and falls to the ground, Neil screams for Seth to wake up. However... The sound of the vital monitor flatlining fills the air. Simon gets up and he says that he's sorry, and Neil walks off. Jessica tries to contain him, but Neil just blasts it away, and he leaves. The two hurry outside to see Neil in the sky gathering energy. Both rings announce that there's a magnetic disturbance, and suddenly a broadcast radio signal plays out that this is a message from Cyborg aboard the Justice League Watchtower. The Watchtower has lost orbit and is heading down towards Earth. This is a level 10 crisis, all hands on deck. Dr. Polaris is crashing the Watchtower into the city. Jessica radios back that her and Simon are on their way, and Simon asks if they can really do this. Cyborg sends out another message stating that his manual restart has failed. Nothing is working, so prepare yourselves. Simon and Jessica hold out their Green Lantern battery and they recite the Green Lantern mantra. And the brightest day, and the blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might beware my power. Green Lantern's light! After getting fully charged, Simon and Jessica jump onto the falling watchtower and they begin to create a giant construct jet to push it back into orbit. Jessica shouts that they're not even close and Simon tells her that they just have to go bigger. As the construct covers the watchtower, Simon and Jessica hold their hands, combining their power until most of the watch watchtower is covered. The thrusters from the construct begin to shift the watchtower and push it back into the sky. And Cyborg radios that they're doing it. The watchtower is back in orbit. Elsewhere, in Neil's mind, Dr. Polaris tells Neil that he knows that Seth's death is not his fault, right? It's the Green Lanterns. They're the ones responsible. Now say it with me. 
Neil looks up, stating, yes, it is their fault. The Green Lanterns were the one who killed Seth, and for that, they will pay. Later, back in Michigan, Jessica steps outside, telling Simon that there is no sign of Neil. And Harcourt wasn't happy, so she just put her on mute for like 10 minutes. She places her hand on Simon's shoulder, telling him that it wasn't his fault. He didn't kill him. Neil killed him the second that he took him out of that hospital. Simon gets up, putting his arm around Jessica, saying, yeah, it's just loaded is all. Sometimes I don't know if I can really do this thing without you. Before they go on, the two rings light up with an image of Jon Stewart. He tells them that this is Kor's leader Jon Stewart and he's sorry for radio silence, but they've had their hands full out in space. However, they are long overdue for a chat. The rings will handle the rest. So buckle up and prepare for exfiltration. The image disappears and they ask what the hell is that? Suddenly their rings shine and it says that it is an order from the central battery. Jessica tells her ring to stop, but the ring says that it cannot. This is top level. It cuts out and then another voice takes over. Attention lanterns of sector 2814, you are being relocated to planet Mogo. Immediately. Without any warning, the rings begin to pull and drag both Simon and Jessica into space. And that concludes the next storyline in the Green Lanterns. Now, I've already started reading the next series, but if you want to see how a Green Lantern trains from being a no symbol, a white circle, to being a fully fleshed out Green Lantern, well, you need to go pick up Green Lanterns, the next issues in this series. It's all about training, and it's all about Jessica and Simon proving that they are, in fact, as badass as they seem. Subscribe to the channel to keep up the date on all of the DC news and awesome comic books, and you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Comic Story, and I'll see you next time right here.